Hey, it's Kurt with KH Model Works. Today I'm going to talk to you about very early Fox Body Mustang kits. You and I will look at the Monogram Mustang Cobra kit, which depicts a 1979 Ford Mustang Cobra, as well as the MPC Wild Breed Mustang, which also depicts a Mustang Cobra and has um, some pretty cool options. Hopefully, if you were interested in building a Fox Body Mustang, this comparison will be useful to you. Alright, so let's go and have a look. Alright. Let's look at the monogram Mustang first. Let's start with the easy things. We have the instruction book. And uh, that's one of, the, one of the smaller instruction page sheets. And it's in a typical monogram format. Not a lot to see here. So if you've seen a monogram instruction sheet, you've seen them all. All right, uh, the decal sheet. We've got a nice, we got a small decal sheet with the really cool Cobra logo. Some stripes, license plates. This is the um, typical monogram thick decal sheet. And even though this kit is from 79, I would venture, I guess, these decals will probably still be usable. And tires. There's four tires in the kit. I got one out. So it's the um, Michelin TRX tire. You barely see it's written around the very edge of the sidewall. The chrome tree features... Headlight buckets, the alternator, mirror, looks like a carburetor, front timing cover, valve cover, and the uh, wheels. I'd like to jokingly refer to these as like the uh, Conline van wheel covers, but these are actual aluminum wheels, and that's what this kit comes with. Clear parts. I like what I see here. We've got a pretty nicely molded windshield, um, uh, a sunroof rear window, and oh, my favorite, clear tail lights. Remember, you can make a clear part red, you cannot make a red part clear. And real headlights, and it looks like fog lights. So a nice clear part stream. Okay, so with the um, easy parts out of the way, let's dig into the, to the meat and potatoes of the kit. The first sprue out of the bag has the front bumper, the engine, and the hood. We've got a and a four-cylinder engine with the starter, the oil filter, the fuel pump, and the oil pan all molded in place. Uh, we've got uh, an accessory drive with one belt, driving only an alternator. Exhaust manifold, the intake manifold. Looks like... Um, hmm. Okay, here's the ex exhaust pipe though, with the turbocharger, the air cleaner, and the front bumper. The grill is not molded open. And see the turn signals are molded in place. Okay, there's another sprue with the chassis. Chassis has nice crisp detail. The seats, looks like the seat backs. We've got a radiator, the instrument panel. With light scribing to see the speedometer and tachometer and the gauges are slightly recessed. And we've got race panel line detail for the looks like the heater controls and the radio. Steering wheel, fan, gear shifter with a very tiny knob, and a two-piece master cylinder and brake booster assembly. The shocks with some flash. There's the fronts of the seats. And a front suspension, which looks adequately busy and visually interesting. Without a picture handy, I don't know if it's completely accurate, but it does look interesting. And not a lot of parts in this kit. Let's see, we got, looks like wheel backs, the rear axle and drive shaft molded in one piece, with this, um, this sure what this thing is called, but that, um, looking at pictures of Mustangs, I see that. And wheel pins, and interior tub. We've got the door cards molded in place, center consoles in place, and rear seats in place with uh, pedals. Very typical of the era. Looks pretty nice. And the most important part, the body. Let's 
body is um, nice and shiny. As though the mold was polished. You know, without measurements, the body does look like the intended subject. On the back, we've got some very, very finely raised script. Pick Ford and Mustang, you almost can't read it. It's almost a shame it's there because it's going to be buried under paint. Side molding. Door handles all looks pretty crisp. And let's see, underhood detail. Uh, the battery and the either the washer bottle or the overflow bottle is molded in place. Got some molded in wiring. So that's all right. So that's the quick overview of the of the monogram kit. Let's look at the MPC kit. Now I will look at the MPC Mustang kit. To get some light on here and okay, let's start again with the chrome and the clear. Get that part out of the way, easy. You get the easy part out of the way first, right? Okay, so instruction sheet. Typical of MPC of the period. And we got the golden wheels offer. That would have been fun. Decal sheet. Let's see. Oh, okay, we got some pretty bold graphics here. MPC logos, license plates, tires, kit features. Goodyear Polygas GT. These are solid tires. Clear. Okay, so we've got the windshield. Uh, this kit has chrome blobs for headlights, so all the clear parts are the windows. And we've got red taillights which I uh, don't like because I've never seen a car with a red backup light. So trying to make the backup light part clear is impossible. All right, next up, let's look at the chrome. So we've got the uh, stock Mustang wheels, the um, three spoke wheels, a, a set of BBS uh, mesh wheels. Big air cleaner. There's this gigantic carburetor, like 2000 CFM. <laughs> Looks like uh, mirrors. There's the chromed headlights. Fog lights. Some extra gauges. Valve covers. So notice there's three valve covers. You've got a V8 and a four cylinder in this kit. Uh, chrome exhaust tips. Lots of flash. Okay. So let's move into the meat and potatoes of the kit. I'll start with the loose parts so I can do them and then put them back where they belong. MPC kit, so they had those small sprue attachment points which probably make it much easier to remove the parts. But then after, you know, 30 years, all the parts fall off the tree. Here's an um, interior panel. This is kind of an interesting parts breakdown because you've got the inside of the engine bay the door card or the door panel and then the uh, rear wheel hump front suspension that's the front a-arms and the cross members now remember how I talked about the monogram one was visually interesting this one is very simplified right just sort of like raised panel detail for some of the detail there we've got one four cylinder engine block which does not have the accessories built in and a separate oil pan, but it's got an awful lot of texture on it. Here's our rear spoiler with a molded in detail with the molded in scripts. A hood scoop. I believe this is a seat back. There's the air cleaner probably for the four cylinder. We've got the shocks with a big fish eye with a big screw eye for attachment. I'm not sure what this part is. A smaller rear spoiler. Here is the accessory drive. There's a spring. The different hood scoop. 
There's a lower front valence, goes under the bumper, a wheel back. Here's the instrument panel. This instrument panel actually looks halfway decent. Get a good look at it here. And uh, you've got the, uh, the main two dials, presumably the speedometer and the tachometer, are inset further. A little bit, uh, some. S you got a lot of texture again. Then you got some detail here for the heater controls and the radio. And like, I don't know how else to describe it. It just looks like it's hand drawn in there, right? Like somebody went to the mold and sort of like drew the stuff in place. Oh. And this looks like a front. This looks like the cross member. Again, with a lot of texture on it and like hand drawn detail. All right. Let's go into the sprues. So this kit has more parts than the monogram kit. Let's see if more is better in this case. We've got a steering wheel with a lot of texture on it. And this one is mushed. I don't know if that's a production problem or just from sitting for you know 40 some years in a bag. A center console, fuel tank, and a spare tire well. Presumably a CB radio. And then here's the top of the console, I guess, so that part's separate from the rest of the console, so you can pose it open, I guess. I'm not sure, it was probably mirrors, wheel pins, and then a custom front valence, and a... Another rear wing? I'm not sure. Here's the four-cylinder engine parts. And what I like here is we've got a lot of separate pieces. A separate fuel pump. Starter, oil pan, accessory drive with with uh, more. Looks like we got a power steering pump here too, and a different front cross member for it. It's the other engine block half, which looks nice, but it has an awful lot of texture. Okay, so we've got here the firewall with the molded in wires, and it may, uh, these are heater hoses that go straight down. Okay, and. <laughs> There's the radiator and core support. There's springs. There's the rear suspension without that, that thing on it. Some more suspension pieces of front uprights. Okay. Here's the other door card. Again, with sort of rough hand drawn detail. I get the idea across. Alright, seats. Seats have a cool shape, but again, a lot of rough texture. So the rear seat is actually separate here. Here are the V8 parts. Looks like an automatic transmission. A fan, I don't know if that fan was still in use in the 70s. Again, we've got that a lot of texture there. The hood, uh, presumably that's the this bracing for if you want to cut out the T-tops. Drive shaft, uh, a roll bar, and exhaust. Okay, here's the other half of the rear axle. This one, and it's got a little bit different representation than the monogram kit does. Again, a lot of weird texture. And the chassis. So the detail is there. Looks like they're trying to interpret the same thing, but the detail is not as crisp. And then you've got this really heavy texture on here, as though the bottom of the car was carpeted. And then on top you've got the um, bottom of the interior. With the molded in rubber mat and this texture. Again, it looks like the details are sort of hand drawn because it's kind of sloppy. But, um, interesting breakdown because parts break down like this with a separate platform, you know, the platform interior and side panels for the interior is um, something you, it's a hallmark of much later kits. So they were thinking ahead with the design of this kit. I've got a custom front, lower valence, and another one of these parts, which I'm sure I'll figure out what they are when I get around to it. So, okay, oh, and the body. Of course, we can't forget the body. Let's take a look. And the body, it's not quite as uh, polished as the, I mean, in terms of being shiny. Again, it definitely captures the look of this era Mustang. We've got a mold, you know, a grill molded in, closed back. Molded in turn signals, which look a little bit larger, maybe a little bit too big, out of scale there. The one thing I thought was pretty 
Let's see here, I'll, if you look on the side, I'm going to try to get this in because this is important. Let's see, there's molded in detail, but it says SS, which, um, to my knowledge, is something that was on Chevrolets, not ever on a Ford. I don't think Ford ever called their cars the SS. But this body is pretty nice looking. And. Oh, yeah, here we go. It's molded in wiper detail. I forgot to show you on the monogram kit. It has molded in wiper detail too, but it was so fine it's going to get buried under paint. But this one actually has a chance of being able to be detailed. All right, you, we've, I've given you a look at both of these. I'll come back and I'll talk about what I think. Conclusion. This is a tough, tough one. So first of all, I will admit I am uh, have a bit of a bias because I, I'll admit it, I'm an old school monogram fanboy. Monogram kits were the ones I really enjoyed building when I was a kid. So I'm gonna try to look past and get past my bias. Now, what I like about the monogram kit, I uh, like the crisp detail, the well-molded parts, and overall it looks like, um, you know, with a very, fairly low parts count, which was kind of monogram's philosophy at the time, it looks like it'd be a lot easier to assemble and make a great-looking replica out of the box. Now, the MPC kit, what do I like about that one? I like the parts breakdown, things like on the engine, you've got a separate oil pan, a separate starter, and separate fuel pump and oil filter, right? So then that way you can paint all those parts separately, and they look better because it's a 3D part, right? It's not half, it's not molded into the engine block, like on the monogram kit. But the MPC kit is marred by all that like weird texture all over the, um, all over the parts, right? Because I mean like an engine block does have some texture in real life, but once you shrink it down to 125th scale, it's negligible, right? But they've got, you know, it looks like the, the engine's covered with carpet. Also with the chassis, the chassis also looks like it's covered with carpet or, or has grass growing on it or something. So that's a real shame. Other things I don't like about the MPC kit, chrome headlights. It might have been acceptable back then, but you know, chrome headlights, I mean like, a headlight isn't a piece of chrome. It's clear, so there's really no place for that in models. And red taillights, because um, you can't make a red piece clear, so you can't accurately depict the backup lights. It's hard to pick a clear winner, but I think the monogram kit has the edge just because of the better texture and it's more cleanly molded. And the detail looks more like an accurate representation, not just something that somebody drew in place by hand, like on MPC. That being said, I think I'll probably build them both because they both have cool qualities about them. So hopefully, if you're looking to build um, a 1979 to 82, 83 Mustang, hopefully this video was of some help to you. Thank you for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you, all my subscribers, and um, you know those who are just curious because you found this video and you're looking at uh, building a Fox Body Mustang. Thank you for watching so much, and I'll see you next time. Take care.